Welcome to Learning Anatomy with Dr. Bakari. This is where we simplify anatomy. And here we also learn anatomy with so much fun. Let us look at the reason why we should not talk while eating. Let's look at the entire configuration of this first. And this shows the part of ingested food. This will enable us to understand the anatomical reason why we should not talk while eating. This is the nasal cavity up here. And inferior to the nasal cavity, we have the oral cavity. These two cavities are separated by a partition that is called the palate. This is the hard palate at the front. And posteriorly, we have the soft palate. And inferior to this region, we have the larynx. Behind the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, and the larynx, we have the pharynx. This is the pharynx behind. It is also referred to as the throat. The pharynx is further subdivided into three subregions based on the structures that are located anterior to them. And the first region is the nasopharynx. This is the nasopharynx because it's the region of the pharynx that is located behind the nasal cavity. And inferior to this, we have the oral pharynx, which is the region of the pharynx that is seen behind the oral cavity. Then inferior to the oral pharynx, we have the laryngopharynx which is the region of the pharynx that is located behind the larynx. This is the larynx in the anterior part. So you see that the subregions or subdivisions of the pharynx are so created based on the structures that are located anterior to them. So this is the pharynx. And anterior to the pharynx, of course, we have the larynx. Inferior to the larynx, we have the trachea, which further bifurcates into two to supply the two lungs. And inferior to the laryngopharynx, we have the esophagus. Inferior to the esophagus, we then have the expanded portion of the GI tract that is called the stomach. These two channels are created for two different substances. From the nasal cavity to the nasopharynx, down to the oropharynx, then the larynx, down to the trachea is for the passage of hair, while from the oral cavity to the oropharynx, to the laryngopharynx, to the esophagus, down to the stomach is for food particles. So you can see that these two pathways are designed for two different substances. So for food particles, food particles ingest into the mouth, we go into the oral cavity. From the oral cavity, the next region that the food particles we go to is the oropharynx, which is the region of the pharynx that is seen behind the oral cavity. Then from the oropharynx, it goes down into the laryngopharynx. It is still the pharynx, but a region of the pharynx that is seen behind the larynx. It will not be directed into the larynx. Why? Because because in the upper part of the larynx, we have a structure that is called the epiglottis. The epiglottis is like a flap that tends to flap up or down depending on the substance that is coming to it. If it is food particles, it is going to flip down so that this passage will be closed and prevent food particles from entering into it. But if it is hair particles, it's going to flip up so as to allow the inflow of air. But because it is food particles, it's going to flap down so that it's going to close this channel up to prevent food particles from entering into it. And the food particles from the oropharynx will then be redirected down into the laryngopharynx because of this closure, because there is no other space for it to pass through so it's going to look for the next available space for it which is going to be the laryngopharynx then it goes to to the laryngopharynx from the laryngopharynx there's going to be the opening of the upper esophageal sphincter. There is a sphincter at the uppermost region of the esophagus that helps to control the rate at which food particles enter into the esophagus. And this is going to open her up so as to allow the passage of food particles into the esophagus. From the esophagus, then it goes to the stomach. That is how food particles are directed towards its part because of the closure of the epiglottis. But if it is hair particles which goes through the nose race, it enters into the nasal cavity. The next region it is pushed to is the nasopharynx. From the nasopharynx, it goes to the oropharynx. From the oropharynx, it crosses anteriorly and the epiglottis will open up because it is hair and that is what is needed in the larynx. So the hair particles will flow in through it and go to the trachea, then into the two lungs. So you can see that the mechanism that is established around this region between the closing and opening of the epiglottis and also the opening of the upper esophageal sphincter will control or help to read direct the passage of food particles to where they are supposed to go to and if it is also hair particles it will direct it to the normal pathway so in the process of talking while eating if we decide to talk while we eat 
there's going to be the opening of the epiglottis. And this is not supposed to be so. If the epiglottis opens, food particles is going to find their way into the larynx and it's going to the trachea. And this can lead to shocking. Because during this process, the larynx, which is also referred to as the voice box, we enhance the phonation. And during this process, because as food is coming in, we are trying to talk there's going to be activation of the larynx, which will now enhance the opening of the epiglottis. Food particles may be allowed to enter through the larynx and this will go down to the trachea and this will lead to shocking. And that is why it is advisable that we do not talk while eating. So thanks for watching. Let's meet again.